So I've developed this AC circuit in NI Multisim. I have an inductor here with an internal resistance, and I have three resistors here in parallel with a little transmission line resistance down at the bottom. So basically my goal here is basically kind of see how the power in this circuit is. And then I'm gonna put a capacitor in parallel with this to improve the power factor of it and make sure that there isn't as much power lost in it as before and just improve the power of it overall. So if we first wanna find the power factor of the circuit, we can recall that the power factor of any circuit is the real component of the total impedance of the circuit divided by the magnitude of the same impedance. Now, because the total impedance is going to be defined as a complex number, the real component of the impedance and the magnitude of the impedance are gonna be different numbers. Generally, the real component is smaller than the magnitude, so usually you'll get a power factor between zero and one. I mean, if we're really lucky, we could probably have both of the real component and the magnitude equal and then we get a power factor of one, but the chances of that are pretty slim. So since we need the total impedance of the circuit, I found that the total impedance of this circuit in particular is equal to uh, this big expression. When we substitute it into our power factor equation though, we get a power factor of roughly 0 0.498, which is kind of bad and I feel like we can definitely do better than that. So as mentioned, we can fix this power factor by placing a capacitor in parallel with our load network, much like what we've got here. However, at this point, we don't actually know the value of the capacitance that will actually correct this power factor, but we can find this by setting our power factor equation equal to one. However, our total impedance is actually gonna be different than the total impedance that we had the last time because of the capacitor. So now it's gonna be the following. If we substitute this value for the total impedance back into our first equation, we get that we'll need a capacitance of roughly 216 nanofarads. We can then find the potential difference and the current across the load network to find the phases so that we can use this equation for the power factor, which at that point, it gives us a power factor of roughly 0 0.968, which is definitely reasonable to work with. So to order to verify my work, I updated the capacitor that was already there to reflect the 216 nanofarads that was found previously, and I also connected a Tektronix oscilloscope to the circuit. With this oscilloscope, I was able to obtain the following signals. In the first screenshot, I am measuring the amplitude of the voltage before the load network. In the screenshot in the middle, I am measuring the voltage after the load network. And the screenshot on the right, I am measuring the time difference between the two voltages. According to NI Multisim, this gives us a power factor of roughly 0 0.968. We can take a similar approach to find out what the power factor would have been had the capacitor not been there, which in this case we get these signals. Again, in the left screenshot, I'm measuring the amplitude of the voltage before the load network. In the screenshot in the middle, I'm measuring the voltage after the load network. And in the screenshot on the right, I'm measuring the time difference between the two voltages. With this information, we get a power factor of roughly 0 0.482. So I would say that the capacitor definitely did something. So I went and built the circuit on a breadboard. So we have the inductor here, L1. We have R1, R2, R3, and then we have the little transmission line resistance down here. So I have these little um, jumper wires as well. These two are to be connected to AC power, which is just gonna be supplied right from this hand tech here. This one's gonna be connected to the channel one scope probe. This jumper wire is gonna be connected to the channel two scope probe here. And then this wire here is gonna be connecting the ground to the channel one scope probe. So we'll go and hook this bad boy up. All right, so I put the circuit up. I got the power uh, connected to it. I got the scope probes connected as well as the ground. So I'm gonna turn this on. And our circuit had a frequency of one kilohertz being sent to the circuit with an amplitude of two volts, which sounds about right. So I'll just press the play button. And there we are. So with the hand tech, I was able to obtain the following signals so that I could measure the voltage before the load network, the voltage after the load network, and the time difference between the two voltages. 
This gave me a power factor of roughly 0 0.435. So as I've mentioned earlier, we needed a 216 nanofarad capacitor in order to fix the power factor of the circuit. However, I don't have a 216 nanofarad capacitor on hand. So what I'm gonna do is put six 40 nanofarad capacitors in parallel like so. And that should give us a little over 216 nanofarads. I believe it's around 225 nanofarads that this will supply, but I think that will suffice. After I put the capacitors in, I got the following signals from my hand tech. From there, I was able to determine the voltage before the load network, the voltage after the load network, and the di time difference between the two voltages. From this, I was able to obtain a power factor of roughly 0.849, which is a little lower than what I've gotten before, but this could have been due to the fact that the capacitor was the capacitance was a little higher than it should have been, or it could have been just due to internal resistances within the physical equipment.